Audio check, sound check. One, two, three, four. Good morning, good evening to all of you. This is Param here. We are now ready to start. Today in this session, we will go into the further details of the data modeling in HANA. We will first have a check in the system regarding the package that we have created and then we will continue with the attribute views, subtypes, the analytic view and calculation views. Right, so we are here in our package. In the previous session yesterday, we were able to create the attribute views for the customer, the material. These are the master data views built from master data table or tables. Likewise, for the material view, the MARA table with the MAKT. Then we went ahead to understand the concept of calculated columns and hierarchies. Today, we will continue from here to the further subtypes of the attribute views. First up, we'll make our notes. Right, so attribute view is master data view and there are three subtypes. Standard, this is what we have created. Then the second type is the time-based and the third subtype is the derived. So for standard we create through the tables, the master data tables, application data, application master data. If the master data is from a time table, time master data, then we create a time based attribute view from time master data. The time master data could be the Gregorian Gregorian timetable. Gregorian is the English calendar today. Start on 1st of January and ends on 31st of December of the calendar year. So that's the Gregorian calendar. And you also have the financial calendar, fiscal calendar. So if the master data view is based from a time table, from a time master data, then we create a time attribute view. Let's check in our system to create a time based attribute view. 
Remember to follow the naming standard of your objects. And over here, we're going to select time. When you select subtype as time, it will ask us to select the time master table type if it is the English calendar or the fiscal calendar. Let's go with the English calendar, the Gregorian calendar, and then it asks the level of detail, the granularity. So if our timetable or our time master is based on dates, most ideally you have invoice dates, document dates, goods received dates, delivery dates, purchase order dates, right? So ideally in a business environment, we go with the the granularity as date. You can also select other types. Then over here, the next parameter after selecting the date is the auto create parameter. And if you select this checkbox, the system will select the timetable and automatically create the view with the fields. So let's confirm. We'll click here on finish. What do we get here? We have the foundation of the view, the table already selected, and the fields already been selected. The columns for the views. These are automatically created by the system. If there is a field that you do not require, you can remove some of those fields in your development. Maybe you select it but you don't want to display. You can remove those fields. So I'm selecting few fields to demonstrate that you can remove a field from the output. Click select delete. Confirm yes. Going here in the semantics, it offers the technical information about the object, about the view, the list of the fields, the key attributes, and it also creates a hierarchy, a level-based hierarchy, the Gregorian hierarchy. So if I open the display, it gives the different levels of the hierarchy, year, quarter, month, week, and then day. This is automatically created. We can also make changes if required. Let's activate the time view and open the data preview. All right, so let's find out year, quarter, month or let's go to the raw data you see all the dates over here so from 1900 to the year 9999 the time data is already preloaded in the SAP HANA so there is no need to do a replication of the timetable unless if you have some customized timetables like Julian calendar, the manufacturing calendar, or factory calendar, or seasonal sales calendar in the retail. So if there are other than the standard time data, you can also have it replicated as a table. And then create a time view. So the time view are based from time master data. It could be the Gregorian or the fiscal. The fiscal table have to be replicated. Likewise, the Gregorian table. And then we can create a time-based view. Now, why we create these time-based views? 
This is to utilize the master data in the analytics. So when you are running a report from HANA to get the sales margin for two company codes in the last two months. So in the last two months you can select the time and gather the month by month or year till month performance. So time provides an important factor in the reporting analytics and therefore we create these time master views. Going over to the next one is the derived attribute view. The derived attribute view is a inherited view with all the definition from the parent view it will be an inherited view with read only so whatever changes that we do from the parent view we will be able to derive and see but we can only use it but cannot change it so in some of the development projects when you are handing over the project to your customer in-house developers. You can provide a derivation from the standard or the time you can derive and display the derived views to be used by the other developers so that they can only use but they cannot make changes. So mostly used in deployments, developments, where the other user can use your views with the inheritance from your view to the derived view and the read only so the other developer can use but cannot make changes. So sometimes there might be need to copy but what we create is a derived so that the consistency is maintained. So Let's create a derived attribute view. We'll derive it from the customer view. Derived from our package view customer and click on finish. So at the landing of the derived view, we already get to see here at the header of the screen, at the header of the object, it is already displayed with a light red color indicating that this is a read-only object. So you can only make change of the description but not the definition. So if I want to add a new field here, for example, the customer phone number over here, right click, I don't get to see the options because they are not enabled, they're all disabled. Would this be like a reference so, object BW? Yes, from a reference, uh, from a BW uh, reference, we can uh, go with the BW reference object, correct. All right. Thank you. So we'll activate this object and we will make changes in the parent object. For example, we're going to add the phone number of the customer, add to the output. Then we will also add the fax number and uh, train station number. So we're adding three fields here in the parent view. Now we will activate the object and then we go back to the derived view from the customer which is going to take the reference as inheritance and we get to see here those three fields. The phone number, fax number and the train station number. 
So we execute the data preview. We will get to see the fields for the phone number, fax number, train station number. So sometimes in during your development, there might be other group of team or other group of developers who would require your object that they would like to use for the reporting and data modeling, but you will not give the authorization to make changes. So you can control it to the authorization. At the same time, you can give it a reference object using the derived objects. So let's go to a diagrammatic representation of the HANA data modeling so that we know the high-level approach of the SAP HANA data modeling. In the SAP HANA data modeling, we have a concept identical to the MDM. All right. So MDM stands for the multi-dimensional modeling. The multi-dimensional modeling is a universal framework where the different dimensions are interconnected to the transactional data like our attribute views, which are offering the master data from different master data tables. So this is our customer attribute view that we have the material attribute view, so let's call it as a product attribute view product dimension, for example, and then you have here the country. So these are all multiple dimensions, time dimension, so in that you got year, got quarter, month, week, etc. In a product, you got a product type, product group, product ID, customer type, customer group, customer ID, country, state, city. Right? So these are all the dimensions. Each of these offers dimension. In a multi-dimensional modeling, we will be creating these multiple dimensions and each of these dimensions offer a mass of data entities with the fields and they are going to get connected towards a transactional data set. The transactional data sets will have transactional data, for example, a sales transactional data, where you have the customer ID, customer group, for example, product ID, product group. Then we got those KPIs, the key performance indicators. KPIs could be gross revenue, the discounts offered, the rebates, the net revenue, the deductions, etc. So these are all the KPIs from a sales transactional. So when we are designing the HANA data modeling, we will first up create the dimensions, the attribute views 
one for customer, one for the product, another one for the time dimension, likewise. We can have as many dimensions as required. There is no maximum limitations. So we can have 20 dimensions, we can have 30 dimensions, we can have 50 dimensions, because each of these dimensions are logical structure. They are not physical tables. And they will be connected to the transactional data. So whenever there is a need to analyze the business analytics from a reporting standpoint, to show the list of all the customer groups where the net revenue was the highest. In the last five years, in specific states where the product group was equal to PG1 and PG2, so we can have a cross-dimensional analytics of the transactional KPIs or get the list of all the deductions offered, the highest deductions offered, in the last five months where product type equal to T1, T2 and customer type was C1, C2 in all the world, in the, all the countries worldwide, so country-wise performance. So we can have a cross-dimensional analytics to support the cross-dimensional analytics, we got a multi-dimensional layout, the multi-dimensional mapping, and this mapping is the modeling approach. It's a universal framework. SAP HANA data modeling is derived from the multi-dimensional modeling. The multi-dimensional modeling also is named as a star join or a star schema because of the way it looks in terms of the mapping. So we've got multiple dimensions that are mapped towards the transactional. The earlier data scientists were designing the MDM, multi-dimensional modeling, have also given a nickname to this particular design or the layout also known as the star schema or the star join based modeling. SAP HANA follows those framework. In the SAP HANA these kind of intermapping of the dimensions to the star schema or the star join is available in the analytic views. So with this basics, we will go into the system and create our first analytic view. Go to your package, so package and select the analytic view. Provide the naming standard as per your project work. So ZAN for analytic underscore view and our example will be a sales profitability. We'll give a number here and we're going to extract the sales profitability from COPA CE1 table. There are no subtypes of analytic view. You can take a note, there are no subtypes of analytic view. So click on finish, we will have a similar landing page. Over here we have the foundation node connecting to the star join node where we will have the multi-dimensional mapping. Let's start with the data foundation, the transactional table with the KPIs. In our project work for the baseline training, we will go with the COPA table, the CE1 IDEA. 
CE1IDEA, CE1 table is a cost-based COPA summary table which provides the sales and profitability with the profitability segments and different other KPIs. Likewise, you got CE2 table, CE3 table, CE4 table for different use cases. The IDEA is the sample data operating concern. The operating concern name may be different for different company codes. In our training environment, we're using the IDES SAP demo system. Therefore, we have given the operating concern as IDEA. In your project, it could be different, but the table CE1 will exist if you're connecting from COPA. So, depending upon these scenarios, if you're connecting from an inventory report for inventory table or warehouse management or production or procurement or financials or dispatch or quality or production, so you have to get the right tables and use that table as a foundation. Also, make sure that the tables have the data already loaded with the transactional data with the KPIs and select the fields. For our tutorial purpose, we are going to select few fields to be able to demonstrate the transactional data modeling. So we're going to start with the posting date over here. You have the GI date, the invoice date and other fields. We find customer, there is a product, there is a billing type. You have sales order, you got the uh, controlling area, let's select the company code, the Burks field, then you got plant, business area, distribution channel, division, cost components, profit center. You can select the fields as per your requirement. Now if you focus here, if I magnify the screen, if you focus here, you will have some of the fields identified with a ABAB -A -B alphabets at the beginning of the field names. These are all ABAB -A -B identified. So what is an AB? These are alphabets that given that gives the hint that you can use these fields as an attribute. These are attribute fields. Now if you scroll here below, you will find there are also other fields which are displayed with a different indicator. So it's not A, B, but there are some numeric values 1 and 2, 1 and 2 at the prefix. So when you have these numeric 1 and 2, it indicates that there are numeric fields and therefore you can use it as a measure. A measure is a KPI field, key performance indicator. So if I want to get an invoiced quantity, that's a numeric value. If I want to get the gross revenue, it's a numeric value. What are the rebates? What are the costs of the goods sold, COGS? It's a numeric value. So these numeric values are understood by HANA and recommended as a hint that you can use these fields as a measure, as a KPI. So for our example, we're going to select here the revenue, right click and add to the output. We'll select the deduction. We'll only select these two for our initial baseline development. So with the hint, you can take the system proposal and select those fields. We got VV010 and VV070. These are the technical names. You can rename at the report or at the semantics. Let's go to the next node on the left hand side. After selecting the fields, we are here in the star join. The fields that we have selected will appear in the foundation. So this becomes the foundation of the star join and it will be further connected to different dimensions. 
as many dimensions as required, though there is no maximum limit the number of dimensions. You can have multiple dimensions connected. That will be our MDM model. So, the fields are being selected. Now we're going to bring in the dimensions. We will use our dimensions that we have created, those attribute views. First, we will go with the customer dimension. We'll connect the fields, for example, customer number to customer number. So when you drag and drop, you will see the arrow connecting to the corresponding field. Likewise, for the material, we'll bring in another dimension, the material dimension, and connect the material number, MATNR, with the article number, ARTNR. That field name description is a product number. So this is how we drag and drop. Now for functional consultants and the application consultants, this will require you to have an understanding about the business operation and which fields that you can use and this is what we actually do in data modeling. Now, over here at the right-hand side of the screen, the fields that are being used from the dimensions will be displayed. We are using two dimensions, one from the customer and the other from the material. Then we have the local fields, the posting date, billing type, the BERGS, that's the company code, and the two KPIs. Plus, you can have calculated columns and restricted columns. We will check here in a moment. So with these basic fields, we're going to go to the semantics node and we have local fields which are local from the transactional table and then we have the master data fields from the dimensions. The local fields are also known as private attributes because they're local also known as private attributes. The shared are master data attributes because they are global attribute values. So we're going to select the local fields and identify whether they are a attribute or a measure. So you can go for one by one or else if you got higher number of fields you can go to the icon at the right hand upper corner within the details in the semantics you have this icon which is going to automatically assign auto assign the attributes and the measures so I'm going to click here only once and does the job of the assignment of the type of the fields Activate, data preview, right, so the first dimension from the customer, we got a fields up till here. The second dimension is the material dimension, we got the fields up till here and the local fields that we have the KPIs. Okay, so let's bring in these two KPIs first and year-wise, uh, country-wise, sorry. So country-wise information, country-wise year-wise where country equal to, put the filter, country equal to US versus Germany and the performance between the two persons is distribution multiply multiple pi or just a line chart so we got two dimensional analytics now this is a MDM model we can increase the number of dimensions let's create another one with a quick, a quick copy and we'll enhance it Z 
ZAN analytic view, sales profitability number two. Let's copy. So when you copy, it will get the exact structure and you can make changes. Go to the package, select the view, and we're going to copy and make changes. So over here, we were using two dimensions. Let's add the third dimension, the time dimension. So I'm going to drag and drop the third dimension here and connect with the corresponding field. So every time or any time whenever you're working with the data modeling, remember that your fields must be available so that with the association of the fields, you can map those fields between different objects. In our case, we have the date underscore SAP from the time dimension. You can also work through the quarter, month, and other time fields. In our example, because we're using the posting date, we're going to connect the posting date with the date underscore SAP so that when these two dates are matching, then we can derive the quarterly performance, year, quarter, month, and weekly performance of the revenue deductions per company code, per customer, per country code against different material product types. So you see the scalability. If we were about to design a report ideally from an ERP, we will create an ABAP report. There were multiple lookup functions, but over here it's more scalable with the graphical drag drop design. Moreover, it's a transactional data reporting directly from the database. Can be consumed by the BW, can be consumed by the other systems. So now we're going to perform the mapping to date underscore SAP to the posting date. Then let's go to the semantics. We can also rename the field to make it uh, more meaningful. That's the gross revenue and uh, this one is the deductions. Activate and data preview. All right. So the first dimension was the customer dimension. The second dimension is the material till here. And then we have now the third dimension with the time dimension up till here. So for example, year-wise, quarterly performance of the gross revenue where country equals to U.S. versus Germany. Quarterly performance. If you also want to display country-wise, year-wise, you can pull and drop. So one for Germany versus the other for the U.S. Performance of the cross revenues. Now if you want to further put the filter with the year, where year equals to um, 2001 versus 2004 versus 3 and 2002. So we're analyzing five years, uh, over four years. So in Germany, 2001, the performance based on the quarter. So this is quarter number two in 2001. That's the highest performing quarter. Then 2002 in Germany, the highest performing quarter is again uh, right. So this is quarter number one for 2002. Likewise, a so quarterly performance. Now let's go back here to the definition and scroll over to the right hand side. So we've got calculated columns, whereas treated columns 
and the input parameters. The calculated columns we've seen an example yesterday deriving the year out of the date by using a string function. Over here also we can use a runtime calculation for a new field and the field will be calculated based upon the base fields. So let's take an example, new calculated column and we've got the revenue, we have the deduction, so by subtracting the deduction from the gross revenue we can create a net revenue. So depending upon the business scenario you can have calculations done on the base fields and derive new runtime fields. Those runtime fields are known as a calculated column. Provides the length. From the BI BW you can have uh, referencing uh, the related object for calculated column is the CKF. Rest of the column is the RKF. Okay, so column type is a measure and we run a basic subtraction from gross revenue operator minus subtraction of deductions from gross revenue. This is our training example. Every time your formula is provided, you got to have it approved by your business, by your subject matter experts. Formula must be approved and then you can use it. So we have a net revenue over here. The next one is the restricted column and it basically implies that a particular KPI can be shown on a filter attribute. So if you want to show the gross revenue for only US, for example if I activate this view and then perform a data output, so I have country-wise and I've got country-wise gross revenue, the net revenue and the deductions. Right, so I've got a formula in place. But if I want to show the gross revenue only for US, for example over here, we got to see here US, Norway, Mexico, Japan and other countries. We can see all of these. But in your report, in your data model, you would like to hide and specifically show a particular filter field where, for example, you want to show the gross revenue only for US and hide the rest of the other country gross revenues by restricting on the country code. So we can apply specific runtime restrictions. We can also do in the reporting and it's also supported here in the modeling. So create a new restricted column. For example, the gross revenue for US. Select the column, for example, country operator value equals to US. Confirm OK. So when we show this field in the report or in the data model, we will only get to see the gross revenue equal for US and other countries will not be displayed. Right? So this is one of the approach. You can apply a filter. If you apply a filter, it will be for the entire data set. So when you put a filter at the country code in the foundation itself, that will be only showing for US. But if you want to show one field for US, another field for all countries, this is a local runtime restriction, not putting the filter at the entire data set. So you can put the filter 
if there is a confirmation that the data set must only be shown for US anytime, then you can put the filter. Or if you use the restricted column, it is based upon the requirement where you want to only show for US if you're using this field. And if you're using this field, it will show for all countries. Okay, so let's activate, confirm yes, and then data preview, we will be able to see the difference between the two fields. So country-wise, I want to show all the gross revenues for all the countries. I find it here, and I can show it here. But if I remove this one and use the other field, the other KPI measure field, and it was only going to show for US and not for other country codes only for US. So it provides a runtime restriction and through a dedicated KPI field. Let's come back to our definition. We had one on the question yesterday regarding the mapping, the types of the joints. So you see here there are multiple types of the joints done here between the three dimensions to the foundation. So whenever we drag and drop, it will offer a default referential join. So anytime you do the mapping, it will be a default referential join. However, you can also make changes. It could be the intersection inner join, a left outer join, a right outer, or a text join. The inner join will offer intersection. The right outer will be, a uh, left outer will be based on the left outer union and write outer union and then a text join for text. The referential join is the default which is basically built on the inner join. To understand more about the definition of these type of joints, I'm going over to the paint to give you an example. Okay. So to understand the type of the joints, let's go here. In the set theory in the arithmetics, we have set A, set B, for example. In the set A, you got values x1, 2, x3, and y1. On the other side, set B, you got values y1, y2, y3, and x1. So as per the arithmetics, when we combine these two sets, we got different ways of combining the two sets or two data sets. So ideally we have a union. Right? So when you do a union between the two, we will have the results of combination from both the two sets. So it will be the common fields, x1, x2, x3, y1, y2, and y3. That's the union result. That's our outer join in database. The union join is the outer join in the database. You still have database related union join also. Union can be further derived as a left union or the right union. Therefore, left outer which will result into the mapping from the left hand side the set A the result of the left outer will be equal to x1 x2 x3 and y1 
So from the left hand side, Y1 here, connecting to the right hand side, left outer, to the Y1 at the right hand side, set B. Similarly, a right outer, by focusing on the right hand side, this is based upon the type of the fields and the values that exist between the two sets. So right outer here will reference from the right hand side, this time it is to set B, and it is going to have a preference focus on set B, give you the result. So the answer of the right outer will be Y1, Y2, Y3, and the value X1 coming from set B connecting to X1 of set A. That's the right outer join. Likewise, we can have a intersection join, also known as the inner join. The inner join will be only the common fields between the two sets in the arithmetics. So it's going to result with only X1 and Y1, the matching fields. Then we have a referential join. Right. Referential join. The referential join is equal to inner join. Uh, well, it cannot be directly equal to, it is a superset of the inner join, built on the inner join, I'm going to put here a tilde symbol, approximately superset of an inner join with the feature of the integrity check of the data types and uh, fields. So the referential join uh, will also confirm that even if the field the technical names are not matching, it will give you the result. So over here in our data modeling, we have connected the customer field in this case, All right? So we have connected KUNNR to KNDNR. So that's that will be the referential result. And likewise, article number to material number. So by default in the SAP HANA, any time when we do a join, it will be a referential join. Let's update our note, analytic views, transactional view. So by default, applicable to all the type of the views, by default, whenever we join, it will be a referential join. multi-dimensional modeling. Now let's go back here to the right hand side output panel. We got the next uh, folder and this is the input parameters. This is optional. Basically when you want to have a variable asking the user through a user prompt select the range of the company codes, the range of the products, you can have a variable through these input parameters. Today as a part of the best practice, the input parameters are created at the reporting, in the BI reporting, in the business objects reporting, at the reporting layer, at the reporting tools. However, there is an alternative option in the HANA also for the input parameters. This is an optional feature. So when you right click here for the new input parameter, there are different types of the input parameters. A direct, where the user will directly select the field, or a column if it is based on the view, or from a table field, or static list for the testing purpose. Direct column based from the view, table 
and static list. These are optional parameters. Now, what we're going to do next is to proceed from here to understand the calculation views so that we will be able to have further optional merging through the union and intersection between views if required. So I will make a note first and then we will practice in the system. Third one is the calculation views. The calculation views offer unification of data. It could be between views or between tables or between tables and views. The unification of data. Calculation view can be created with a graphical design or using structure current language. So, let's have a check on the steps. We need to activate this field first. Okay. So, go back to the package and right-click and select Calculation Views. So, so far it's quite easy to create and uh, it's easy to deploy. We will learn about that in reporting as well. So, follow the naming standard, ZCL underscore view for calculation view. We'll put here 01, graphical and click here on finish. So we have a similar landing. And over here we have the tools palette which we can use for performing an intersection join or the union join or to the subset of fields, to the projection and aggregation for summation, so summarization, and then the ranking. So these are the tools that are available for the unification. This is the graphical approach, and over here, what we're going to do is to bring in tables or views and have a projection. Projection is to reduce the number of fields and only use the field that we require. So there are, let's say, more fields in the table, you have a selection of projection. From the projected, we will connect to the union or intersection join and do an aggregation and activate. Okay, so let's bring in the projections first. Okay, just hold on.
Uh, hello, Kuti. Yeah, I'm uh, just now disconnected from the go to meeting. Uh, are you seeing me offline? Check audio check. Audio check sound check. So Audio check, sound check. Yeah, I'm connected from the phone. I'm not uh, able to connect from my computer. I will not be able to display the screen. So I'll try once more, starting my computer.
I didn't hear you. Did you say what about Christ? No, or what? Audio check. Audio check. Audio check, sound check. All right, uh, everybody, uh, I'm connecting from the phone, from my mobile phone app. Uh, we will have to continue tomorrow. Please uh, continue with your practice. We'll come back tomorrow, same time. I will have to check with my computer. Thank you.